here to talk about shit. All right, so today we're going to talk about what supermoto bike you should buy. Greeno, which should they buy? Depends. All right. Street or track? Yeah, I figure I, I came up with a couple like different categories. One yeah. was like, well, we'll just go one on one. Uh, typical average street rider, tell them what bike to get. I can think of two. For the three. For the street? Four, yeah. Uh, if you want a fancy real supermoto, okay. get a FE501. You're going to recommend somebody riding on the street with a FE501? If they want an actual supermoto. So that would be street person who's doing like racing and pretty competitive track days. Yeah, and they'll probably want to do, because that and a Sierra 450, I think it's the L. Yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. It's good. They're both good. They kind of still suck on the street on the highway. And usually people complain, like track guys will complain they don't have enough power of kick. Then they usually do a cam and an ECU thing, but get a 701 or a 690. Yeah, thank you. But it's not a real supermoto. And you could debate me all day. <laughs> right? You could say, it is it's a real supermoto. Super because it jumps. But it doesn't, if you ride I mean, like, a, is not like a real supermoto. No. But if a you, 701, yeah. you can take it on a fire trail. You can take it on the go kart track. It's not going to do great. Yeah. You can't race it on a go kart track, but yeah. it's a real supermoto. You can jump it. You can take it to the go kart track. You can take it to the road race track. Yeah. And I think the 701 is the best all-around motorcycle that belongs in its own category. If you ride a real supermoto, race supermoto, yeah. 701 does not feel like a supermoto, but it is its own amazing motorcycle, which everybody loves in the canyons, the streets, whatever it is, everyone loves the 701 or the 690. Yeah, but your if color. you have one bike, and with that one bike, you're gonna go trail riding, supermoto track days, road race track days, and commute. 690, 701, Six, Yeah, and not even, don't even talk about it. Wonderful. Now, let's bike. say you don't want to have a million dollars. You don't want to have a bunch of uh, liability issues. Uh, you know, you're not going to go wrong with a DRZ. Get a DRZ on the street, put it at like 1639 gearing. You're going to be able to ride that all day long. It's going to be fun. It's going to be reliable. It's going to be good to go. I hated my DRZ on the street. Honestly, I had two. I had an S model and an SM model. I did not like it on the street. I think it's a great town bike. Yeah, right. I get a tall, I get a short, I get it in the middle. I did not like it. Get a Grom. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, actually not a bad idea. You just punt in town, okay. get a Grom, or just get a 701 and... That's going to bring yeah. it to the next uh, category. You're just an average motorcyclist, and you want a bike to screw around with at a go-kart track. I would say if you want something street little, get a Grom. Otherwise, get a TTR 125, CRF 100, XR100, XR150, any of those air-cooled small dirt bikes, put on some scooter tires. You can pay literally $100 a month and get unlimited track time here at Adams. So you're looking at $100 and a $1,000 bike, and you just go to town, rip laps, have fun. Or a Grom. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, or the Grom, Grom or yeah. the Z125. Like Some guys are really moving on them, and they outgrow it maybe after. If you're going every weekend, usually people will outgrow it in like six Depends how good you are, like six months, and then they move on to something more serious. Uh, next topic you are a serious road racer and you want a bike to cross train. Either the CRF 150R as a mini moto, doesn't matter if you're a 17 or 12, or you get a 450 supermoto. I like the FS, it has oh, a side FS, button, yeah. and uh, FS 450, it's ready to go. Just yeah, a lot of times people will get like a old, already converted CRF 450, which is super fast, until you stall it and it's hot, and it's 100 degrees at the track. You, so I have a firm, I just buy bikes with a button, I'm a sissy, whatever, fight yeah. me, I don't care. And to um, convert it, it costs so much. It was not the, cheap. I would say the easy answer here is a CRF 150R or an FS 450. If you want to have more fun though, any of the 85s and you convert it to a mini motor, like a yeah. CR85, most fun. Yeah. Fucking awesome. And then, uh, all right, we'll just go to the next category. Uh, short riders, women riders. We had Sylvia right here filming. So instead of asking the woman thinking, what bike we should have for women, we thought we'd just mansplain it while the woman who rides well, better than I was thinking not as much as like, a, I'm just thinking geometry wise, because motorcycle nerds, People that throw lowering links on bikes without changing the shock and how it's 
dampening and the and and looking at the geometry it usually ruins how the motorcycles feel if they slam the forks up and just put a lowering link on uh i know really short people like vinny sorry vinny you're short yeah. he's one of our staff he's like five whatever yeah, yeah. five feet but he's short he's short he he could ride the shit out of any of these bikes so he, I does have a, he does whatever just i have a controversial you opinion you about lowering bikes so we, you'll often hear that if you lower the bikes, it's going to ruin the suspension, right? Okay. So if you're a short rider and you're a good rider, you can get away with the taller bike. Yeah. If you're a short rider and you're not at that level of riding, you're going to get more benefit from the shorter bike. You're not riding it at a level that the, that the suspension being messed up is going to affect you. So in other words, if you want to lower the bike, go ahead and lower the bike because you're probably not riding at a level that you need that suspension to be perfect because yeah. if you are, you're probably going to get away with the taller bike. Yeah. And of course, the KLX 300. And what most people, when they start moving, especially on a track, there's no red lights. You're not stopping on the track. Once people are moving, they feel pretty comfortable on a motorcycle. Um, I mean, you see kids ride the little bikes, and they can't put their feet on the ground. Their dad holds the, the tail section, yeah, and they just yeah. take off. And once they're moving... They're fine. I That's think, exactly the example I was thinking about earlier when I was talking about shorter riders yeah. that are good. And I thought about like that kid who's like 11 or 12 and they're starting to transfer to like a big bike. And the bike is too tall for them and they're riding the hell out of it. And it's fine. Yeah. Um, cool. So we got, we had street riders, pretty serious track day riders or cross training riders. Um, and uh, shorter riders, street bike, any other thing that you can think oh, of as far as like categories of like going, what people should buy for a super motorbike? Going back on the tall person, short person, I think more importantly is when you're riding, how the ergonomics feel. Brian likes tall bars. He, how tall are you, Brian? So I was 6'2", and I broke my back a couple times. Hey, well, I'm 5'9", <laughs> I don't like the tall bars. I like mid, mid bars. Brian mid. loves... <laughs> the, the tall bars. Uh, other people yeah. like to have higher foot pegs. Uh, uh, it feels better for them, especially sport bike riders. I noticed they like higher foot pegs. Yeah. Um, and it depends on what you like. I would get suited for the ergonomics while the bike is moving. More important than when you're static, sitting in the parking lot, like about to get on track. I think that's way more important. And as long as we're like revisiting stuff, because you were mentioning that you didn't like the DRZ on the street. I am privileged that I can ride any bike I want. Yeah. Right. All my, my friends have bikes. I have bikes and I can come down the supermoto track and I can ride, run TMs and Huskies and all this stuff. And I choose to ride this, which is damn near stock DRZ. That being or, said. And if I sell this and I only have one motorcycle, I will have a DRZ that's geared tall. That'll be my one bike. I'm kind of boring. I don't want to ride a street bike like or a sport bike on the street. I would pick a GS. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Something big and comfortable big with and comfortable. a big yeah. windshield. Those are sick. Yeah. So the best supermoto somebody should buy is a GS1250. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else you can think of? That's pretty much it. The uh, biggest thing, seat time. Yeah. Stop worrying about, oh, this bike, that bike. Just seat time. Just ride with Buy ride something with decent time. from the start. When you get some clapped out, you know, 2004 YZ450, you know, you can get them to go really fast and you can get them for cheap, but it, what's the old saying? You know, cheap, fast, reliable, pick two. So that's always the, that's probably the best guide when it comes to uh, shopping. For so you're saying cheap, make fast, reliable, more money so you can just buy the things you want. Uh, <laughs> or just get a DRZ and be a bum and go surf and ride your motorcycle. That's what I would do. All right. So uh, let us know what we screwed up. What you think uh, is an ideal street supermoto, track supermoto, and screw around supermoto. Put it in the comments below. Thanks for having us. Hope you can join us for a school day.